Hold here in my left hand, uh, 30th anniversary 12C. What's so unusual about that? Well, I'm going to put that down and I'm going to hold this up. I've had this for a year and a half and I can't wait till my contract runs out to buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many electronic devices do you know of that have lasted 30 years? So, when this anniversary came around, uh, HP dug me out of the woodwork. Yes, I'm still at HP. I work on printers now. They dug me out of the wood woodwork to uh, muse about things about the 12C. And probably uh, the question that I'd like a dime for for every time it was asked of me is, why did it last so long? Why, did, why is it still around for 30 years? And then the second question that I'm asked about as frequently, uh, is when you made it, did you know it was going to last 30 years? <laughs> okay, so that, that one's easy. For you calculator club people, I want to answer that second question first. The answer is no. <laughs> we thought that 12C was going to have a two-year life. <laughs> we were on two years, about two-year cycles. I, I think you all know uh, I had a calendar for Richard here that had the, all those, the calculator families, you know. We were pumping them out every two years. We had a division uh, that was turning around uh, new, new editions of it. In fact, uh, I could ask a trivia question. What was the code name for the 11C, 12C family? It was called Voyager. 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 You know where that Voyager name came from. But that, that was in the 81s when they were sending that uh, rocket off to Saturn. Well, Voyager was to get us to Saturn. Okay, so the name itself implied a two-year life. Uh, Saturn processor uh, was a, a new four-bit processor. The 11C, 12C had a one-bit processor. And so we thought that that was the end of that calculator line and we we're moving on. So anyway, so now on to the other question. Of, uh, why do I think it lasted so long? Well, I made a few notes. Uh, number one, I think, is quality. You don't see these things broken. Uh, and uh, I've run into people that said, uh, hey, I've uh, had a 12C since college 25 years ago. Uh, I still got it running here. Uh, but I bought two more. I got <coughs> Uh, I got one on my vacation home, I got one at home, and I have one spare just in case HP quits making them someday. So that I, but it, I never had to use a spare because those original three keep running. And you know what? I had to change the batteries in those things once. So, you know, that, that's not an accident. Uh, I remember uh, the, the calculators before this just before this were the 33 and 34 of that family. Uh, we actually had some quality issues on that uh, with, with the keyboard. And actually, uh, my section manager, who was Stan Mintz, uh, who was responsible for the low-end uh, calculators in our division. We had like low, medium, and high range calculators, three whole sections. And uh, Bill Hewlett actually called him up and says, do not screw that family up. <laughs> That's number one. So we were honest truth. Bill Hewlett called and said, don't screw it up. So we were getting pretty good interest from on top. But in the typical uh, Hewlett mode, he also said, you have all the resources you need. That's a different philosophy, I think, than we see from a lot of companies today. So. We had uh, backing to build this thing right. So what about battery life? Do you know that the original designs of this thing had two batteries? Uh, two of the button cells that are laid side by side. Uh, and we did the specs on that, we did some testing, and we found that, that those two batteries on worst case analysis on our chips and our displays and everything, those batteries would last us uh, three months, six months, something like that. We thought that was too tight. So at the very last instant, 
we redesigned the case so we could put three batteries in side by side, if you remember the old additions of the calculators. And those three batteries side by side increased the battery life to what it is today. And in the process, that's why this case is just a little thicker in the back than it is. The original designs had it totally flat through there. Uh, so we brought the case up uh, a little bit in the back so we can put the three button cells in side by side, and that's how we got the battery life out of it. Uh, you know, one of the things that people talk a lot about today is innovation. Well, how can you talk about a 30-year-old product with, uh, well, what did we do right on the innovation? Well, a lot of things hit right at that point in time uh, that made it so that we could really produce this calculator. First, I, I believe this might be that it is the first <coughs> LCD display that brought the power down. Uh, so that we, I mean, we heard a lot earlier about the worries around power. Well, a lot of the calculators before this one had rechargers, and you can imagine carrying rechargers bigger than the calculator around, and the real estate agent out in the field running out of power at the, at the last minute. So LCD displays brought the power down, and also the chip count went way down. Does anybody know what the, the uh, CPU in this, well, the CPU, uh, I really meant the other chip. We have two chips in this thing, a CPU and the other chip. Do you know what the other chip was called? R2-D2. Yep, R2-D2, very good. And that stood for ROM, RAM, Display Driver. The reason that was significant is we actually put those display drivers right on that chip. That really cut down the number of components uh, that we had to support, really cut down on the power. Uh, also, at that point in time, uh, we were moving, here's another fact, we were moving from six micron technology to, do you believe it, five micron technology. <laughs> that's, that's what gave us uh, all that uh, space to get more programming in and uh, put all that stuff on one chip. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about a failure that we had. The failure on the 12C was the low battery detect. The, the, original, the original 12C had a little LED that was supposed to light when you came close to blow battery. <laughs> <laughs> little, 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 little thing in the, the corner, probably some of the original 12Cs, you might be able to see it there. There's a little dot that's supposed to turn black when you're low on power. Can you believe how hard that thing is to design when you have a 12-year battery life? <laughs> so actually, that was something that was thrown out of the original design. Uh, we pushed the front, really, on a, on a whole bunch of things. I was fortunate uh, to start my career with HP on uh, the 65 users library. So what that uh, project was is, you know, the 65, uh, I don't need to tell you all, uh, <laughs> magnetic programmable calculator. Users submitted programs on that magnetic calculator to this library, and then we published the library out so that people could order those programs, and it was a way to increase the usage on the 65. So my first job was really uh, reading those programs from the customers, looking them over, and uh, uh, accepting them yes or no, and giving them a reward if we accepted them. And then we bundled a lot of those programs into uh, libraries that we then distributed to customers. And from that, I worked <coughs> to the project that uh, Richard was talking about, making two cubed equal eight, uh, getting the accuracy out of the routines. Uh, and so working through all that financial stuff and making it accurate, uh, I mean, I look, I, the way I view my role in that was, was like, Moses taking the tablets down from the mountain. <laughs> and the, the person at the top of the mountain was a guy by the name of Khan at UC Berkeley, who was the, the world-renowned expert in accuracy. And so my job as a PhD numerical analyst was interpreting what he said and bringing it down to the level that it actually executed. So that's another thing about quality in the calculator is getting the right answers. So if we had not gotten the right answers on real estate calculations or bonds or mortgage, so that was an, one of the original pushes 
on the 12C is to get it accepted by the National Bureau of Standards as the right answer. And now uh, the 12C is used as uh, a calculator that could be used in exams for business finance or, or, or real estate. Uh, I heard a little story just a little while ago that uh, the board that puts that test out says, well, what is the standard you could use on this for this these answers? Uh, and they scratched their head and says, well, it's the 12C. That's another one of the part of the answer to the question, why is the 12C still selling? It's because it gets the accepted answer. Two real estate people talking about the, the mortgage price on a house, they both use a 12C, they get the answer, they agree on it. They understand the methods that those uh, calculations were done with. There's no debate. That is the answer. The same way with bond calculations and, and uh, all that. How much time do I have, Richard? Uh, ten more minutes. Okay. Uh, let's, let me see if I have any. I might just throw it open for questions to see what people are, are interested in. Let's see. Uh, one last thing that, I, that is underestimated on this that I wanted to talk about in building the quality. Uh, after working on the math routines and the, coal, the code, I actually moved into manufacturing. And we, we did a whole bunch of innovative things in manufacturing that really aren't talked about much. It's, it's one of the first times we did uh, what, what are called Japanese methods for quality, like three sigma quality, where you really try to build uh, into the, all the way from the vendor, all the way into the production line quality. You design the parts to be three sigma out on their error analysis. Uh, and we did uh, just in time delivery to the production line. So as parts started getting bad uh, in the production line, we knew right away as they were coming off the line uh, if, if things were going wrong for us and we turn around at the vendor. A great story on that is we were having uh, trouble uh, soldering down some ICs on the board and it turned out that that was because the vendor of the, the board uh, was having quality control problems with, with the deposition of the metal copper onto the, the plate. And so we actually flew out looked at that vendor, looked at their process, helped them with their process, understood that the reason they were having those quality problems, they had too small of a deposition tank. Uh, it was too hard to control the level of metal in the deposition. So we bought them a new tank that was a whole lot bigger so that they could produce a lot more quality parts. So that attention to quality details of every part that went in. I visited, as a project manager, I visited every vendor of every part in that calculator and talked with them, knew them, knew their quality controls, knew it. So that was also an exciting uh, educational trip. So I could talk about the 12C for hours. There's some videotapes out there on the, on the internet that have that, but uh, <laughs> We, I helped uh, make some of those in Bill Hewlett's office here a while back. Uh, Laura there could probably give you uh, the links to those sometime. hp.com slash go slash Voyager. Okay. So that will give you a, a little video. Uh, they actually honored me by letting me uh, sit in Bill Hewlett's chair filming me talking about the 12C and they made that video. That was a real trip. Be in the Hewlett's office on the springs, tears to my eyes, still does. Anyway, questions? How difficult or easy was it working with Con? Con and I got a really good relationship. So he's a good guy. He, some people, though, saying asking Con a question is like taking a drink from a fire hose. <laughs> and, uh, he is a very But uh, he's brilliant. Uh, so I think my uh, contribution to that uh, relationship was converting his brilliance <coughs> into reality. Yeah. How many people were working on the R&D side of the project, you know, the wider series of the 12C? Uh, really hard to count. We had a division of 150. So, uh, and we were a priority project. So, you know, we built, there was all the MEs, 
the mechanical engineers, we had our own plastic injection molding tooling and all that. So there's a bunch of engineers on that. Then uh, uh, Double E is building the chips. Uh, and then, the, then all the software people. I, just, I think there's a team of about six software people. Uh, I would add up, uh, uh, and you know, some of them are just part-time jobs, so what can you say? All the vendors, too, building parts. Uh, if, if you had a group of people that you brought together that had somewhat of a contribution to the production of the 12C, it'd probably be in the uh, 250, 300. But the R&D team itself, our section, was probably 30. And for what duration? We're ongoing. You know, we were rolling calculators every two years. Uh, no, I'm talking just for the 12C. As a 12C, 11C project. Uh, uh, two and a half, three years. How did you come up with the landscape design? Was it was that design always a con always the choice from the beginning, or did you uh, did your com uh, department find out that landscape was more attractive than portrait? Okay, uh, multiple answers to that. Uh, that one of the main focuses was business, and this felt a little bit like a business calculator with a numeric keypad on the right, a little keyboard entry. But now, now I'm going to tell you the real truth. <laughs> um, the uh, one of the really the big things we were worried about is protecting the LCD from breakage, and. Uh, sticking the LCD out on the end of the calculator and, and making it go through the drop test was a lot more difficult than putting it, look at how much plastic is around that display. We, did, we really built, built it this way to protect the LCD. Uh, the criterion of the design was uh, it had to fit in a shirt pocket. And you know, we got that accomplished. Yeah. Do you remember what the last function was that you threw out? What did not make it into the 12C that was in the running? Or was it all decided so early there wasn't any last minute horse trading? Huh. <laughs> uh, I don't remember throwing out. Uh, I remember throwing in. <laughs> we want one more thing. And, you know, we had limited space. And, my wife teases me. I didn't write the code for the, the 12C. I wrote uh, several before that, I the code that went in. I did the 95, uh, but uh, that was probably the last full calculator I did. I did the 92 also. Those, I was on working on those. But uh, you'd have these boards of code, and, and you'd stare for hours trying to figure out how to squeeze two more lines in someplace. And all that microcode. It's just really interesting puzzle kind of work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, question. Okay, the 15 was the same platform physically, right? the same shape. Yeah. Did you have one group, was one of the design groups the carrier for the case and everything, and everybody else just piggyback, or did they all have their own development? Sure. Uh, the 15C is primarily uh, software you know, on top of that particular package. So the, the change in the keys and the printing uh, somewhat similar. The really <coughs> exciting thing, I believe, on the 15C, from my point of view, was the solve key. It's got some really interesting math. Uh, those, uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna launch into that. Let me just say that uh, the math behind solving iteration for I and solve and those sorts of things, IRR, those routines that, that uh, solve, uh, have to solve it by iteration. Those are really interesting math problems. Okay. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have the uh, source code in any of the Voyagers, would you? I do. It's a 12C, yeah. I was told it was a lot of time. Some interest here. Do you have the source code with comments and everything, or just because uh, <laughs> yes. I've got the decompiled binary? <laughs> I, I have the 12C original source code with comments. 
The reason that's interesting is uh, uh, I wrote uh, code on punch cards. So my punch cards, uh, it took a lot more time to uh, put in comments on those punch cards. <laughs> so when you got a punch card listing, uh, you print it out and you write, I wrote in hand documentation. So there, there's not a computer. You'd only see paper copies of the comments. It's and, and I also have, probably more interesting, uh, I have all the uh, cons description of the algorithms, which is probably priceless. Yeah. I, I'd be interested in the third one, because that's one that has been really painful to translate in C because it's full of go-tos everywhere, and I had to put lots of them in, in the C version, and I've never been able to really verify that I did a good translation of it. That's a very interesting one. The, the <coughs> web C, as we're now running for an emulation layer, I've actually had to patch the ROM in a couple of places uh, to deal with stuff that did not emulate properly and you know, having the source code might be some help, so I don't have to try to understand the, the compiled binary uh, or the, and then try to re reverse engineering and patch it. Okay, let's talk about what you need. <laughs> How many 12 Cs? Enough so that I wished I would have had a dime for everyone that sold. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think in the video I said what I would really like is 0. .0001 of the dollars that were calculated through the thing. <laughs> yeah, obviously there were five models made in that line, the 10, 11, 12, 15, and 16, but I was wondering if it was ever were there ever any additional models on the drawing board that never got developed? Uh, there, no, uh, uh, 16 was a skunk works project in R&D. Ah. So. Um, question about the, the current lineup. Are you happy with, uh, let's say, the Platinum and the current 12C? From a quality standpoint, uh, from, from your point of view. I, I'm not going to comment. Uh, I honestly don't know because, you know, after uh, being in production for a year on the 12C, I moved on to other things and I've been away from the calculator line for a long time. So, uh, make Laura it's one of those people answer that question. <laughs> yeah. I uh, think you worked on the, on the 95? I programmed the 95 personally. Yeah. And, and it never was released. Right. Do you, can you explain why? Well, the 95C? Yeah. 95C, uh, the little the top cat, the little print yeah. calculator. Yeah. Uh, remember what that one was is uh, uh, it uh, didn't have a card reader. Right. It had uh, four programming function keys on it, so it had memory that it was they're keeping the program. Yeah. So, uh, I think they took it out just because of fragmentation in the product line. They had, had the thing called the 97 at that time too, which was the card reader. Right. And, and so I guess uh, they decided that, the, you know, that it was too hard to hand enter the programs into the 95. It's just a shame it got to such a high level it, to, to the making of the manuals and making a hundred or so of them. Yeah. And it just seems a strange decision for the last minute. Well, obviously, me being assigned to program, and I was disappointed that yeah. it never, never got out. Yeah. I really don't know the total reason behind that decision. Okay. Yeah. Something from your early to how many user library programs have ever submitted and accepted? Because all this is gone. I don't know. Uh, uh, how many? It, it was in the, probably in the thousands range. A lot of interesting stuff, astrology, astronomy. Yeah. Uh, because most of that's gone, the documentation is gone, unfortunately. <coughs> yeah. We put some of it into to packs. Uh, yeah. I think collector nuts, I've got them. Uh, maybe Richard does too. Some that's of those were the packs that went together. <coughs> yep. Okay. One last question.
What were your software development tools when you developed software for these calculators? <laughs> software development tools. <laughs> <laughs> Pencil, paper, <laughs> punch, card. punch cards. No, we didn't have any. So, so uh, you won't believe this, but our, our original uh, <coughs> box uh, for the hardware had uh, keys on it. You would set a breakpoint in code. Uh, and so you'd say, okay, I want to break at such and such a line. You'd set the little toggles and then you'd say go. And then you could examine what the registers were all at that point in time. <coughs> so, but I had, a, I had a luxurious because David Cochran, who did the 35, uh, they simulated that on computers, and he actually had a cot in the computer room and an alarm hooked up to the, to the computer. So it take hour and a half or so between to get to his break point. The alarm would wake up and look at it. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all. Thank you.